Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. My name is Rachel, I am a knitter and a sewer and it is so great to have you here. Um, so I'm going to start off by saying happy 2023, happy new year everybody. I hope you all had a lovely time over the holidays, um, whatever you were doing with family, friends etc. Um, yeah I hope you all had a really great Christmas if you celebrate um, and New Year again if you celebrate, not everybody celebrates New Year um, at this time. So yeah, um, really great to have you back. I hope you enjoyed my Vlogmas, um, first time I've ever done like vlogging properly and oh it was quite a lot of work wasn't it and you probably told by the could tell by the end of it I was getting quite tired um I was doing way too much too much sewing too much knitting too much everything um it's all a bit crazy so um yeah um I think it was nice though because I had so much lovely handmade stuff over Christmas so I did I you know I was pleased that I managed it in the end um but yeah I'm sorry if I'm a bit pale the sky outside is really grey and horrible and the and I've um tried to set up my lighting so it's a bit warmer but I feel like I still look like Casper the ghost <laughs> so hopefully that'll be okay I might see if I can edit it um and make myself look less like Casper the ghost um but yeah, um, I wanted to do a video, a 2022 roundup of everything that I made in 2022. 2022, I'm going to say that a lot apparently, um, was an amazing year. Um, I started sewing in February and it, I just kind of got obsessed and I did so much sewing last year. Uh, yeah, I did a fair amount of knitting as well. Um, it's the first time I knitted socks, which is really great. And now I'm like obsessed with sock knitting because it's so quick and I wear them all the time. So it's like really nice to have that kind of me made um, to wear, like even when you're just wearing like pajamas, <laughs> um, it's nice to like shove on a me made and they are obviously so much warmer than normal socks, which I love. Um, so yeah, it was a really great year for me, um, but we should probably just get started because there's so much stuff. Um, I'm not gonna show things physically because um, half of them are away in storage. I don't have much in the way of clothing storage. Um, most of my clothes, um, I, it's seasonal, so I like change my wardrobe over. So half of my clothes are up in the loft, which means half of my me maids are up in the loft. So I thought it'd just be easier for me to just put up photos and then I can just sit here and go through. I've got my phone because otherwise I'm gonna forget um, everything that I made. So I've got my phone here so that I can look up the list of everything that I made. If you went on my Instagram you may have seen on New Year's Eve I posted a reel of everything that I made um, and that was really lovely to have that um, to like see it all together and it really was quite a lot of stuff. Okay so let's start off. Um, my first make was a Tilly and the Buttons uh, indigo dress which I'm actually wearing one of those now. <laughs> I'll show you at the end because this was like my one of my last makes of the year. Um, it's a Tilly and the Buttons indigo dress that I made for my birthday. Um, so as I say I actually started sewing in February but I basically had like a few like massive cock-ups as my first makes which I think is fairly normal. I was a bit sad about them um, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they weren't really wearable so as much as I made some stuff in February and March it wasn't very good um so really April was the first time I finished a dress at the beginning of April which I wore for my birthday it was a William Morris print Tilly and the Buttons indigo dress with like the classic sleeves like this one's got which I wore to William Morris's house on my birthday, which was really lovely. I really enjoyed that. Um, that felt really, really nice. Um, and yeah, it was great. Um, it was a little bit tight on the bust, but I've sort of like learned now. I'm like learning about fitting. I'm still very much learning because I have quite a big bust. It takes quite a lot of fiddling around with bust adjustments and things, but I'm sort of getting there. I'm learning about positive ease and negative ease and all these things. I mean, I knew about them for knitting, but like it's slightly different with sewing and bust arts and stuff. Um, so yeah, that was the first dress I made, which I really, really loved. Um, and then knitting wise, I was actually really slow in the new year with knitting. I basically started two cardigans in January and it just they just took me ages I think I was just like really tired I was working really hard on my masters and yeah I was just a bit sort of like tired um <laughs> and fed up and I actually didn't end up um knitting as much as I would like to so I didn't finish those for quite a while sorry I'm hoping that's a bit better I feel like I wasn't really in the middle of the screen <laughs> hopefully that's a bit better for you um so yeah I um didn't really like properly 
get any knitted garments finished until the April either. So the first thing that I finished was the Kai cardigan from um, Mode at Rowan, which was kindly gifted to me. Um, so they gifted me the yarn and the pattern book, which was great. Um, and that was super cosy. And I was a bit worried that by the time I finished it, I wouldn't get any wear out of it. But we actually went to Scotland for a week in April and it was really quite chilly. I think one day it was actually six degrees <laughs> when I went to go and... Um, see the alpacas <laughs> you can see that on my instagram i went to go and like feed alpacas and do an alpaca experience and look at how they make the yarn and stuff which was really cool um and i wore my kai cardigan for that that was really nice because it's nice big like oversized it's made out of rowan merino aria so it's really like high quality really soft really lovely yarn um so yeah that was really nice got some nice big buttons for that funnily enough i bought the buttons from the cotswold sewing centers with no idea that like six months later I'd actually be working for them <laughs> which is really cool um and then quite quickly after that actually I finished uh making my first sock um now my first sock did not go well I started off on DPNs which I hated it was too fiddly and too many needles and blah, blah, blah stressful so then I moved on to magic loop method which was fine but it left a massive ladder which I really really didn't like so then I sort of finish this sock with a ladder in it and put it to one side and I have actually frogged it now um because I've kind of like figured out the whole sock knitting thing a bit more so I'm gonna like reuse the yarn and redo it but technically I made a sock that's one of my makes um that was a bit of a failed make <laughs> um so yeah that's sort of in there um and then my next my next oh, I can't remember like which order these came in actually um I think the cardigan came first so let's go with that so I finished my cream cardigan which was a 1980s pattern a vintage pattern it's got like bubbles on it um I really love this cardigan I basically wear it all the time um it's made out of style craft um special dk which is an acrylic yarn so it washes really easy I'm not particularly um precious with it because it's just an acrylic um yeah I'm a big big fan of this cardigan I need more like off-white cream cardigans in my life because I literally wear it constantly um so I'm <laughs> planning to make a few more um but yeah I was so so happy with that um I love following the pattern as well it's really actually like a lot of vintage patterns can be quite hard to follow but like the 80s you're starting to get closer to like how they are now um so it was fairly easy to follow um that got a lot of wear over spring summer autumn winter wearing it now <laughs> um so yeah really really love that one um and then I made my Tilly and the Buttons Lotta dress which was a pattern I got for my birthday um and I made that out of a vintage bed sheet now this was one of my favorite things that I made um because one of like the first things I made that really fit very well um and it was so comfy and I made it as I say out of a vintage bed sheet so it felt like a really positive thing because it hardly cost me any money and it was quite sustainable it had this beautiful border on the bottom of the bed sheet which I managed to like get onto the dress in a sort of nice way if that makes sense um i didn't realize that the hem was dipped so it wasn't as straight as i thought the border was going to be but it looks quite nice you can see in the photo um and i ended up wearing that dress so much it's the perfect dress for those really boiling hot summer days um when you're just feeling really like you don't want to wear anything you don't want anything touching your skin because it's just like really breezy beautiful cotton really easy to wear um I'll definitely be making some more lot of dresses. I made two in 2022 and I think I'll be making some more because as I say, they're just like the easiest dresses. They're elasticated waist pockets. You know, you can make them long sleeve, short sleeve, you can change the length, etc. And they're just kind of like throw on dresses. Super, super easy. And then I made, um, it seems to be a bit of a theme. I've just realized like so many of my patterns that I make are Tilly and the Buttons. It's just simply because they're like really simple and easy to follow. Although I do want to try some more different patterns. I think it's also that they do a lot of patterns that aren't like really fitted so because I'm still very much learning about as I say like bust adjust I have narrow shoulders and a big bust so I need to do bust adjustments full bust adjustments and narrow shoulder adjustments and all that stuff I'm not really making super fitted clothing um so my next make was a little bit of a fail I made Tilly and the Buttons um Erin dungarees out of a pair of curtains that I bought from a charity shop now it was all sewn up really well and looks really great but I basically made the size that 
was the right size for my measurements but they're huge they're like absolutely massive and i probably should have gone down a size or two um because they're just way too big they look ridiculous look like you could get another person in them <laughs> um, and also i'm not a huge fan because of like where the seam lies um so with like the dungarees i have from like lucy and yak and stuff there's no seam um on the waist or around the hips whereas with the Aaron dungarees there's a big seam across the bottom of the tummy and it's just not very flattering on me um i don't feel very comfortable wearing them so my plan is actually to take them apart and remake them i might remake them into i've got the everyday trouser pattern from um new craft house so i think i might have a go at making them into some like comfy yeah easy breezy like spring summer trousers and i've got actually a lot of the curtain fabric left and i think i might have a go at making like a matching jacket so it'll be like a cute little co-ord set which probably won't wear that much together but it's quite cute just to have um so yeah then i made the erin dungarees and then i made um my favorite dress that i made in 2022 which was for a wedding um it was a close friend's wedding it was supposed to be in italy but because of covid it was cancelled and then they rebooked it for london so i thought i'd bring a bit of the italian sunshine so i wore a lemon print dress and i've wanted a lemon print dress for years and so to make myself the dream lemon print dress oh i love it um, so the fabric was from sew over it and i made an indigo dress but i added a ruffled tear to the bottom and i used the anthea blouse um sleeves from anna allen clothing um and it worked so well i've seen other people who'd done that hack um, but it worked particularly well in that fabric because it was a medium weight cotton probably medium to heavyweight cotton really with a bit of a stretch to it and um it just draped lovely the ruffle sat really nicely and the sleeves because they're big puffy sleeves sat really well because they had a bit of stiffness to them um so i was really pleased with that dress and i wore absolutely loads over the summer it was just like one of my favourite, favourite makes. Um, I felt really beautiful in it, um, which is what sewing is all about. And then I made another lot of dress. Um, as I say, that's become one of my favourite patterns. I changed it slightly. I actually, because it's supposed to have like an overlap on the bodice, I actually sort of shortened the bodice slightly um, and I made it out of a red gingham from Textile Express. Um, and yeah, I got the red gingham on sale. I think it was 20% off because they were doing a Jubilee weekend sale. I tend to buy all my fabric in the sale or I buy it secondhand like curtains and bed sheets and stuff. I always find that's like the best way to do it. Um, so yeah, I made the red gingham one, which again got loads of wear. I got it finished just in time for a holiday to Cornwall and it was like the perfect Cornish dress. Um, and yeah, I've got pictures of me in the sunflower fields looking like I'm actually in Provence, <laughs> but I'm in the Cotswolds. Um, so yeah, I absolutely love that dress. Um, okay, and then on to a couple of summer knits, which um, again, unfortunately, um, this one was a bit of a fail. I made the Seaborn Tea by Herb Garden Knitwear in Drops Bell, which is a linen and cotton mix. Um, it's a gorgeous pattern. It's a striped tea with a scalloped edge, beautiful scalloped edge on the sleeves as well. Really beautiful pattern. But sadly, um, it came up really short. It was like, it's supposed to be slightly cropped, but it was like, a bra <laughs> it was not good at all and i was really sad because to lengthen it it requires frogging quite a lot because it's knit um bottom up so i need to basically undo take the sleeves off undo the shoulders and go all the way back down to the um like armpit shaping <laughs> which is just yeah so i just put it to one side because i was like i actually just can't right now um but basically what i need to do is it's a 12 row repeat for the, the stripe pattern i basically need to add in probably 12 maybe i might even add in 24 just to be safe and have it a bit longer um this at some point this year i will do that i will make the effort to do that probably like march april time and then i can wear it over the summer um because it's really beautiful and the scalloped edge came out really nicely and i was really sad about it so i will sort that out um but that was basically one of the first like proper summer knits i've ever done and so it was a bit disappointing um but my next knit was a bit more successful i made uh i can't actually remember what the card oh i can yes the flora cardigan from mode at rowan no it wasn't mode at rowan 
it was Quail Studios um, Essential Pastels collection, their summer collection, and I made it from, oh, I can't actually remember, Rowan Cotton. It was a cotton yarn by Rowan. <laughs> Sorry, can't remember which one. Um, and that came out really nicely. It was a really nice, like, easy breezy, lightweight cardigan, um, sort of like lacy knit. So that will definitely be coming out in the spring and being worn a lot. Um, it's like off-white, you know, standard. It's like a jacket. There's no buttons. It just kind of, like, sits. The only thing is the sleeves are a little bit long, um, which I have to fold up the cuffs, which is fine. It just doesn't sit as nicely as I would like. But um, I find that a lot with these drop shoulder patterns is that I have quite um, narrow shoulders, as I said. So, yeah, like, it ends up, the sleeves end up being too long. Um, but, yeah, a couple of pieces of knitwear for the summer, which I really liked. Um, and then I made, I think this must be my last dress for summer. Um, it was the... Um, plum dress by Coco Wawa Designs um, and that was lovely. I made it in a blue gingham which is the same gingham as the red gingham that I got from Textile Express for my um, lotter dress um, and that was lovely. Again like just easy breezy smock dress, pockets, frills on the sleeve. Um, I managed to get a bit of, wear, bit of wear out of that in September because it was still warm enough. I wore it on a holiday to Bath at the beginning of September um, and that all worked really really well. Um, but then it sort of had to go away. So I'm looking forward to getting that out again. Um, and then we moved very much into, I think I'm gonna like change like the order because I was actually working on a Christmas jumper the whole summer, as a lot of you will know. I'm just checking my list. <laughs> um, as a lot of you will know, I was on Kirstie's Handmade Christmas. So I was working on a Christmas jumper. So technically my next finished item was my Christmas jumper, my big red frilly Christmas jumper. Um, which I finished in time for the show at the end of September. We filmed in October. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm i so pleased with that. It's like one of my first proper big designs, completely designed from scratch by me. I will be releasing the pattern. I've decided to release it in September because it's very much a Christmas jumper. So I feel that makes sense. So it'll be coming out in September, 2023. So keep an eye out on my Instagram if you're interested in test knitting for me because I will be looking for test knitters. Um, but yeah, I absolutely love that jumper. It got worn so much over Christmas. I couldn't wear it until the 15th of December, sadly, because of obviously like the show needing to be on TV. Um, so I think next year it'll come out on the first <laughs> and I'll be wearing it absolutely loads. Um, and then I made a Tilly and the Buttons indigo dress, <laughs> another one, uh, with the long bracelet sleeves in a tartan. It was a black watch tartan, which I actually made to wear on the show because I wanted something, they told us to wear something look Christmassy and I wanted something that would be comfortable, um, that made me feel good about myself and that I could wear with my cream cardigan. That was my plan. Um, so yeah, that went really well. It, it came up really well on the show, looked really good. And yeah, that dress has literally barely left my body I've worn it all autumn all winter I love it throw it on with woolly tights cardigan jumper absolutely love that um and then my next dress that I made um was a pansy dress from yes I think that was no yes let's go with that it was the pansy dress I can't remember which one came first in this order um is the pansy dress um from rosary apparel um and I made that out of a beautiful um Lewis and Irene fabric covered in pumpkins and autumn fruits and autumn squashes um which I'm really really I just love that dress I love autumn so celebrating autumn with that dress was great I got it done in time for an autumn holiday in October wore absolute loads again smocky style long puff sleeves pockets yeah really love that dress absolutely gorgeous um got a lot of wear out of that um and then the next one I made was the Anthea um Allen clothing that what what am I on about the Anthea blouse but I turned it into a dress sorry by Anna Allen clothing <laughs> um, I turned it into a dress so basically where there's a line for shortening or lengthening the blouse I just cut off there and added a gathered skirt with pockets um in a beautiful orange fabric that I got from Village Haberdashery which sadly has now closed super sad um love that shop um but yeah got lots of wear up that it's not the warmest so i think i'll probably end up wearing it in the summer actually because it's much more of a summer dress i'll wear it like summer and september when it's still warm enough to wear dresses 
um that are like thinner um and it feels all to me um but i did wear it for my auntie's per party in november um which was really nice to get to wear that and it does feel like a bit of a celebration dress but yeah that came out really nicely i think i'd really like to make another one um because it's super comfy and i feel like you could make one in like a nice flannel or something be like cozy for winter um and i like the button-up neck and stuff so yeah very pleased with that one um and then i think we're getting into christmas mate oh hello sorry um my battery died <laughs> i knew it was going to i could see it flashing but i thought i might just get there in time um i did not <laughs> so yeah um and i realized we're not actually quite onto christmas makes yet there was one more autumn make which was pearly's jumper which i knitted um pearl is my dog she's a greyhound put a picture of her in a little jumper um she needed a new jumper this year because our old one was getting really like scraggy um so yeah i made that out of style craft special aaron super cute it was like dead easy in the round pattern just basically knitted a tube with two armholes <laughs> um it was really uh yeah nice chilled relaxed make that i did on my holiday in october um so that was super cute and she wore it a bit over christmas but to be quite honest with you other than that week where we had like loads of snow which you would have seen in my vlogmas if you watch my vlogmas we had loads of snow and ice it's not been cold enough for her to wear it so she wore it for one week and hasn't really worn it yet but you know we often have snow in like february january february so i would imagine we'll uh, have something like that um but yeah now we are officially on to christmas makes so in november i did the dementia uk knitting challenge we raised 290 pounds for dementia uk which is amazing i'm so pleased about that um and basically the challenge was for me to knit every day for 30 minutes um and raise money for dementia uk i decided that everybody who donated would be um put into a raffle to win a garland and that's what i was knitting throughout november was this garland so it's like little hats little stockings little jumpers super cute so yeah that went to its new owner who's very appreciative to tiv i can't say that word um of the garland said she'll use it every year which is lovely to hear um and it was super cute um so yeah that was my first christmas make um now i can't remember what came in what order so i'm just gonna check again my little list um yes so after the garland was an advent calendar which i made um in collaboration with cotswold sewing centers um this was before i like officially had a job with them as a social media manager they gifted me a new Janome machine which is right there so I sewed an advent calendar with them which I've been wanting to do for ages I totally botched up the quilting the back looks dreadful but I just put it up because it was needed to go up it was the first of December I'm gonna totally redo the back I think um for next year because it's a right mess but it worked it had chocolates in it and dog treats and it was super cute on the wall so um yeah that was the first thing then I decided to very impromptu to christmas decoration because i wanted a garland for my mantelpiece and i couldn't find anything that worked so i just knitted one i knitted a, ho a very simple holly leaf garland with little berries and it looks super cute and i'm so happy with it it's going to come out every year now um so yeah that was on the mantelpiece for christmas which was lovely um and then i think my next make was probably the pyjamas. I made my husband and I matching Christmas pyjamas to wear on Christmas Eve. We actually wore them quite a lot over Christmas holidays. Really comfy. They're the everyday trouser pattern from New Craft House. Um, so yeah, elasticated waist, pockets. He said he needed pockets with his pyjamas because he likes to put his phone in his pocket <laughs> walk around the house. Um, so yeah, I really love those. Um, they are quite Christmassy, but I also think you can probably get away with them all year round um, because they're like dogs in Christmas jumpers. So you can wear them like in the winter as like just dogs in jumpers. Um, but I love those. The fabric's actually in the sale now. I'm really tempted to buy some more and make like a matching pyjama top for myself. But I don't know, you know, you just don't have like the motivation to do it when you can't wear it immediately. I know that's terrible. I'm like such a millennial with no <laughs> patience. <laughs> but yeah, I'm just not sure I can be bothered. Um, maybe if they have some more of it next year, who knows? Um, but yeah, so I made that. And then I made us all Christmas stockings, which was super cute. I made one for the dogs to share, a huge one for my husband so I could get all his gifts in it and they still didn't even fit. <laughs> and a tiny one for me and none of my gifts fit in the tiny one. That was all the fabric I had left. And my husband ended up like putting half of it in a bag. So next year I'm gonna make sacks, like Santa sacks instead of Christmas stockings with like a drawstring, like cute little 
you know patchwork sacks or something um and i will use the stockings as decoration because they are really lovely and i'm really pleased with them i use the rosary apparel pattern that she put up on her youtube channel it was really simple really easy it took like 15 minutes to make a stocking so yeah those will be decorations i think next year um and then uh my next christmas make was my socks my christmas socks my west yorkshire spinners gingerbread yarn um so every year they tend to bring out christmas sock yarn and i think they bring out a different colorway every year and i think this year's was the gingerbread that was their new one um and that was my first ever pair of socks that i knitted up as a pair actually made two and they were really successful i used a 2.5 millimeter needle and that like completely changed the game um because like the tent like the tension the stitch the gauge that's what i'm trying to say the gauge was really tight which was great and then it was on a 25 millimeter cable centimeter sorry cable which was like the circumference of the sock which meant that it was just knitting in the round and i love it that i'm just going to use that pattern so much now it's the louise tilbrook free sock pattern that she has on her website um, i'm already knitting up another pair of socks now with west yorkshire spinners self striping yarn um with those it's just yeah i'm gonna have loads of socks i think made just because it's like such a quick easy pattern so i was really pleased with those wore those on christmas eve and over the christmas holidays still wearing them now because they're socks and i love them <laughs> um and then my final 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 make of the year um was this dress that i'm wearing which is my tilly and the buttons christmas day dress which has got I don't know I'm like an airplane which has got the sleeves the classic sleeves it's just a classic shape I'll put up a picture so you can get a better idea of it um I wore it on Christmas day I wore it actually I didn't in the end I was going to wear it on New Year's Eve and then I stayed in my pajamas because I was knackered and that's what I needed to do for self-care purposes so I did not get changed but I'm planning to wear this to my anniversary dinner which is um in January our anniversary is the middle of January, our wedding anniversary, so I'm going to wear it. And my husband got me these earrings for Christmas, which match literally perfectly. The green is the same green, so I'm very happy with those. Um, so yes, that is it. All my makes for 2022. I hope you enjoyed watching this video and seeing everything that I made. Um, I will be making so much more in 2023, <laughs> um, just as much stuff, if not more. I have lots of exciting projects on the go. I'm really excited to announce a few things um, in the next few weeks, so keep an eye out for those. Um, thank you so much for everybody who watched and supported my channel in 2022. I really sort of, pr I started my channel in 21, but I properly got into it in 22 and turned it into mostly crafting. Um, and I'm just loving it. I'm loving the community, the comments, everything. So thank you so much to everybody who likes and comments and subscribes and joins in here. I just love having you here. Um, and yeah, stay tuned for everything in 2023 because I've got so many exciting things to come. So yeah, happy new year, everybody. And I will see you next time. Thanks. Bye. Thank you.